Good morning. Uh, hi, I'm Danny Chelius. I'm an associate professor of pediatric otolaryngology at Baylor College of Medicine, where I primarily practice pediatric head and neck surgery at Texas Children's Hospital. And more relevant, I'm the have the honor of working with a team of almost 60 physicians uh, and an incredible staff at the Academy offices in DC uh, as the coordinator of the annual meeting uh, for 2022. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this podcast. I'd like to introduce my dear friend uh, and colleague, Dr. Jeffrey Liu. Uh, Jeff is uh, an associate professor at the Lewis Katz School of Medicine at Temple University and at Fox Chase Cancer Center. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Danny. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. I'm looking forward to the annual meeting. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And I got to say, you have a lot of titles now, but you'll always be, to me, uh, that really smart looking guy sitting next to Vasu Devi on the stage at the Section for Residents and Fellows meeting, my very first academy that I ever went to. And uh, I will keep you on that pedestal my entire life. <laughs> I was much younger back then. We, we, we all were. We all were. Um, this morning, Jeff and I wanted to visit with you about uh, the meeting this year. It's coming up next week in Philadelphia. Um, we're all getting really excited about the meeting. And our hope is this morning to highlight some of the uh, things that you can expect to see at Philly this year. And especially for those of you who are young members or first time attendees to give you a little impression of what the meeting is like and give you some advice about attending for the first time. So Jeff, uh, we're coming to your hometown. Uh, I've been really excited for this meeting in particular because I know I'm going to see you there and uh, see the places I've been hearing about from you for years. Uh, some of the chairs from the Philadelphia Otolaryngology Departments did a little video talking about the highlights of their hometown, but I'm curious. Your opinion is what I value most. Tell me about Philly. What, what's not to miss if you're there as, a, as an Academy member visiting uh, the, the city? Well, I could spend this entire podcast talking about great places to visit in Philly, but I'll keep it very brief or for our uh, listeners to explore further. On the museum side, there's wonderful walkable museums from the convention center straight up the um, Ben Franklin Parkway, including the Philadelphia Art Museum, which are the Rocky Steps. I encourage everyone to take a run up there and run up the steps like Rocky did, as well as the Barnes Museum. Those are some of the two best museums in the city, but there are numerous other museums, including the Constitution Center. Um, Philadelphia is a town to eat and drink in, and it is not nearly as expensive as most other cities. And so areas to explore that encourage are, that are walkable are Chinatown, which is walkable from the convention center for some wonderful lunches. My favorite place I plan to visit is the Nanzo um, hand-drawn noodle house, which is fantastic. Um, the other areas to visit in town are at 13th and Samson, just a stone's throw from the convention center where there are multiple excellent restaurants and bars. And the other areas by Rittenhouse, which is approximately 18th and Walnut Street. Again, maybe about a mile to uh, three quarters of a mile from the convention center, but certainly near convention center hotels that also has wonderful restaurants and bars. So in terms of areas to explore, there's a Chinatown around the convention center, which is an easy spot for lunch, as well as 13th and Samson and 18th and Walnut, all and the city is very small and walkable between the two rivers. Um, so I encourage our listeners to explore the city and the food and options that it, it offers. That sounds awesome. I'm, I'm seriously looking forward to this. Um, if you haven't been to an academy meeting before, the bulk of the meeting will take place in the convention center. And most of the hotels are positioned around the convention center and should be walkable uh, to the convention center. Occasionally, you may have to take a bus or an Uber, depending on where you're staying. Um, most of the events will be in the convention center, but there will be a few events at the host hotel uh, next to the convention center, uh, including our Sim Tank uh, showcase on Monday night, where uh, people who have invented simulation devices and simulation education will present uh, their, their device or their program uh, to a panel of judges and uh, be judged for it. It's a really great event every year. And our second annual Entrepreneur Face-Off Challenge on Tuesday night where otolaryngology inventors will be competing uh, in an invention competition to, to share their inventions and uh, we'll, we'll crown a winner this year. Last year was the first time we did it in LA. It was extremely well received and a really fun event um, and uh, really reemphasized to me that there are many, many, many much smarter people than me in our field uh, who are gonna be inventing the devices that drive the future of, of what we do. And that's gonna be Tuesday night also at the host hotel. But for the most part, most of the rest of the meeting is in the convention center. So as you're looking in the app, pay attention to where meetings are, what room it's in, or if it's designated uh, at, the, at the host hotel. So Jeff, you've been going to these meetings now for 14, 15 years. Uh, could, I, could I pressure you to ask me 
or to tell me uh, uh, what's one of your favorite memories of the meeting? Well, frankly, Danny, having gone to meetings for so many years, I've developed an entire network of friends and colleagues that I really cherish my relationship with. Uh, my first meeting actually was as a resident. As you know, I ended up being chair of their section for residents and fellows. And so for trainees and young physicians, young physicians is being defined as those within the first eight years of their practice. Uh, I encourage you to go to the section for residents and fellows or the young physicians section to really just meet people. Otolaryngologists, I think, are some of the nicest people around. And I think that just walking, and this is our first meeting after COVID. So I think if you just walk up to someone, introduce yourself and say, hi, my name is Jeff. This is, it's been a long time since I've come to a meeting. What brings you here? I think you'll find a lot of like-minded, friendly faces uh, to talk about otolaryngology. And I think for the section residents and fellows or the young physician section or the woman in otolaryngology section, people will be very excited to just meet people face to face. And so for my favorite memories have always been meeting new people and hanging out with old friends all at the same time. Um, so that would be my favorite memories for the meeting. I, I have to second that. My first time at the Section for Residents and Fellows Assembly, I remember seeing my peers, actually one of my, my classmates and our mutual friend, Mark Zafirio, with you and Vasu and some other folks up on stage and realized that even as a resident or fellow, I have uh, a mark to make in the academy. There's a role for me to volunteer, to add my voice. And I remember Gavin Setson, uh, Dr. Setson, who was then chair-elect of the Board of Governors, coming to talk to us at that uh, General Assembly. And, and basically telling us, look, we want you here. We want your voice here. We want you engaged in the academy. And, and I've seen now for the last 14, 15 years or so that, that nothing could be truer. Um, and the friends and mentors that I made at that first meeting have been critical. So definitely, if you are a resident or fellow, make sure you get to the uh, section for residents and fellows on Sunday evening. Uh, the young physician section also meeting on Sunday evening. Uh, the Women in Otolaryngology General Assembly is at lunchtime on Monday, um, and there's no other uh, major educational activities going on Monday at lunch at the same time. So I would really encourage everyone to see what's going on in the, in the Women in Otolaryngology section. So much of the energy and work uh, towards improving our field arises there with WIO. And I think uh, Dr. Krishna, uh, the chair of WIO, and her colleagues have done a great job putting together uh, the program for this year's uh, WIO Assembly. And finally, the Board of Governors Assembly is another wonderful place to meet colleagues and to get engaged. The Board of Governors meeting is on Saturday evening after the Board of Governors committee meetings. And it's where the grassroots efforts of our academy get organized and get moving. Um, I would encourage uh, anyone who's interested in advocacy, uh, legislative efforts, um, payer management, uh, things to check out the Board of Governors Assembly on Saturday evening. Um, Things are shaping up pretty awesome for the meeting this year. I wanted to share this with you, Jeff, and with our audience. Um, we are shaping up to have one of the biggest meetings in recent memory. We already have 5, 000, over 5,000 attendees registered. Um, for perspective, that's not many less at the moment than we're ultimately registered for the meeting in New Orleans, which was one of our biggest meetings. I believe we've already surpassed the Atlanta meeting and I expect that we're going to wind up in the mid 5,000 range for attendees, making it truly one of the biggest otolaryngology meetings um, in recent years, for sure, or in, in recent memory. And so I, I'm so excited that there's the people want to come back out and, and come to the meeting and get engaged. We're tired of the pandemic, I believe. And uh, last year in Los Angeles, uh, there was this sense as you walk down the halls that people were just so happy to be together, so happy to be there. Uh, I saw a lot of socially distanced and not socially distanced hugging in the hallways of Los Angeles. And uh, I, I just think we're ready for a reunion. We're ready to be back together. And it looks like the turnout is going to be um, pretty epic. Um, this is the educational program that we have planned for this year. And it's one of our biggest ever as well. Um, our most traditional offerings are our expert series and our panel presentations. Expert series are usually a one or two instructor didactic lecture offered by the top experts in the field um, who are widely published uh, uh, on the topic and are meant to serve as sort of the embodiment of the, the core knowledge base of the field. Uh, in one form or another, the expert series lectures have been around since about 1930 and um, have, have continued in one form or another throughout. Panel presentations are um, usually a panel of three to four speakers, and it's supposed to be on a more controversial topic, a topic that doesn't necessarily 
have a well-founded core knowledge, uh, something where there's still a lot of room for discussion, debate, and opinion. Um, those are usually lively sessions uh, that, that will explore some of the controversies in the field. Um, the biggest controversies in the field, I hope, are laid out in the great debates this year. We have one de great debate for each subspecialty track at the meeting, and they're supposed to be exploring the hottest questions right now with really well-recognized um, experts in the subspecialty areas. The great debates are invited lectures uh, that, that are really don't miss events. Um, I actually, after last year's meeting, went back and watched all the great debates on video, uh, which you'll be able to uh, this year as well. And uh, I learned a ton from the great debates. So I'm, I'm grateful to our great debaters and to Dr. Cecilia Damask, um, who organized the great debates this year um, on the program committee. Uh, this year, we've got an expanded simulation footprint at the meeting. So I already mentioned Sim Tank Monday night. There's an, uh, there's an ENT emergency simulation course over at Jefferson during the day on Monday. And I believe there are still some spots left for registration for that course. But then there are 19 simulation courses being offered in the body of the meeting. They're in a special simulation room um, where uh, they're going to be set up for, for hands-on simulation. Because attendance is limited, there's going to be a sign-up announced this week for the simulation courses to give everyone an opportunity to register for a course if they would like to. It's free attendance at the simulation courses, um, but I expect them to fill up very quickly, and then it'll be first come, first serve attendance uh, at the actual meeting. But you can do things like uh, learn osteotomy techniques on a, on a nasal bone model, um, uh, auricular hematoma management, uh, slide tracheoplasty management, hands-on ultrasound um, work, um, and a host of other uh, simulation courses. So that's a really exciting addition this year. Um, the core of our meeting from the very first meeting back in the late 1800s, 1896, has been the scientific presentations. At the first meeting in Kansas City, everyone brought a paper and everyone shared their paper um, with uh, the attendees and there was extensive debate and discussion at that meeting. And uh, it'll be the same this year um, with over 400 scientific oral presentations, another 500 poster presentations. Don't miss the poster hall. Um, new this year and something I'm potentially most excited about this year is our um, conversational-based practical problem-solving offerings. Business Solutions for Breakfast with the Private Practice Study Group is going to be breakfast time discussions about practice management, practical office management. Each table has a theme, and you can show up and have an informal discussion with experts in the leadership of practice management and the business of medicine within our field. Similarly, at lunch with the clinical experts, we're going to have about 30 tables each day focused on a different topic with a topical expert leading the discussion to have an informal conversation about how we move forward in that discussion, uh, how we move forward in the science, how we take care of patients in the office. It's a really great way to have a practical discussion about a, a specific topic. And then finally, the annual meeting office hours. At lunch on Sunday and on Tuesday, there will be uh, three or four rooms with a panel of invited leaders in the field taking audience questions and having a conversation driven by the audience um, informally about their field. So for example, in head and neck surgery, uh, you can come ask Dr. May St. John, Dr. Sherry Ann Nathan, Dr. Jose Zavios, and Dr. Randy Weber, um, whatever you want about head and neck surgery and the future of the field. Um, and there are gonna be seven of those during the meeting. So if you didn't get the chance to sign up for one of the clinical, uh, or one of the lunches with the clinical experts, and you would like to attend a lunchtime event on Sunday or Tuesday, go check out the office hours. It's gonna be a really incredible not to miss uh, event at the meeting. The last thing is committee meetings. I would venture to say that most of us who are engaged at the academy probably started our engagement in the sections or on the committees. Most of the committee meetings at the academy are open to the public. They're on the academy schedule. Check them out, show up, introduce yourself to the, uh, to the committee chair volunteer for work on committee. There's no better way to get involved and onto a committee than to just show up at the meeting and, and to put your name forward and to, to add your, your uh, uh, effort. Jeff, did you, are, have you served on any academy committees? I'm on two. I'm on the head neck and uh, endocrine committee. And I, I, I echo Danny's comments that 
um, sort of getting started and trying to get involved, showing up to a committee and just seeing what it's about is really easy to do. And these committees are open and welcome to everybody. Jeff, have you started uh, actually working on your schedule for the meeting yet? Uh, I'm working on it now. Uh, I wanted to point out that there's an excellent online uh, scheduler. And I want to just put a plug in for all the new members that may be or new, new attendees who have never been to a meeting before. You know, it's been a couple of years since we've really been open since COVID. And so I imagine there's a lot of people coming to this meeting who have never been to a meeting before. My best and even as a seasoned attendee, I find the meeting overwhelming in a wonderful way. There is so much content there. And you can see from your slide just how much is going on and how, how, how it can be overwhelming. So my advice to any new attendee is to start with the panels or lectures. Just go with where there's gonna be a lot of people in the room because um, you know that the content there is gonna be uh, well curated with by experts uh, and, and um, you know, very, very focused with uh, knowledgeable people in the field. And start. that's a good starting point for you to say like, hey, this person said something in this lecture that I thought was really interesting. I wonder if there's more content on this. And then you can dig into the program a little bit to find something that will fit in with your interests. And then, then you're off to the races. It's kind of like surfing the internet. You start on one big splash page and next thing you know, you're down a rabbit hole. So the, for the academy meeting, I recommend the same thing. If you're not sure where to begin, just go to an interesting panel or a speaker and then take it from there to search out additional content after that. So um, I incur, uh, I, I and welcome all the new attendees to the um, Academy meeting. This is uh, just to show you really quickly, Jeff referenced this online schedule. If you go to the Academy homepage, entnet.org, um, on this first banner that pops up, you'll see the annual meeting schedule is available. If you click into the schedule, you can see an overview, overview kind of the schedule at a glance. And um, so I would encourage everyone if you're there Sunday, don't miss the opening ceremony uh, to get started. The Conley Ethics Lecture uh, is going to be really excellent on Sunday morning. And then you can look through this and get kind of an overview of the, the meeting. You can see the section meetings we talked about, the Board of Governors Assembly, uh, the WIO General Assembly. And then uh, if you'd like to actually get into scheduling your meeting, if you click on View Schedule, um, you will get the entire meeting schedule. Now, it's going to show in whatever time zone you're sitting in. So please note that these times are for your time zone. So this is central time where I'm sitting in Houston right now, whereas Jeff would see it in East Coast time if he pulled it up. But you can look through the whole schedule and you can actually filter it to see what you're most interested in. Uh, for example, if you want to see where are the head and neck surgery talks, you can add this filter. If you want to see where are the office hours that I mentioned, if we put the office hours filter on, hit apply, up is going to pop the different office hours for the meeting, and you can go in and click in one. And as I said, here is the office hours and head and neck surgery. It's on Sunday the 11th, 11 o'clock Central Time. But down below here, we have the correct Eastern Standard Time listed, and you can see the speakers. So I encourage you to explore this. And uh, most likely later today or Tuesday morning, you'll be able to download the meeting app from the App Store. It'll be available on both the Apple and Google app stores. And it'll have a very easy version of the same schedule that you can bookmark, create your own schedule off of. You'll be able to message other meeting attendees in the app. There are maps in the app. Um, honestly, I, I can't survive at the meeting without the app readily available on my phone. And the app has been absent for a few years and we're, we're back with the app this year. And I'm so excited. Uh, Rachel Heiner and Tears of Lofgren, the two senior directors for the meeting and for education, I've done a wonderful job getting the app organized, rolling the app out, and I'm so grateful to them and to their team. So Jeff, last word here before we wrap up, what's your final piece of advice or final uh, uh, suggestion for new meeting attendees uh, this year in Philadelphia? Thanks, Danny. Well, you know, this is a very exciting time. Um, we are past what was a, a terrible time with COVID. And this is a time to remember what it was like before COVID was like when we would be going to professional meetings, meeting with professional colleagues, and frankly, realizing that we're not alone in the world that we live in and the struggles that we have, the challenges that we have, and the successes that we have in taking care of patients in the field of otolaryngology. I encourage everyone to attend a meeting and enjoy it, to dive deep, meet new people, try new experiences, because in, in, in the wonderful city of Philadelphia, which offers a lot of food, drink, and history, um, and so I would just say explore and have fun because you're going to a meeting and it's post COVID in many ways. And I think it'll be a wonderful time for everyone involved. I couldn't 
agree more, Jeff. Uh, I believe we've both experienced that the longer you're involved with the academy, the less the academy is a nebulous structure or a, or a concept, and the more it is the people at your side working towards common goals. And nowhere is that better on display. Yeah, it's your home. No, nowhere is that better on display than at the annual meeting. So come out, uh, and engage, learn, have fun, um, and hopefully say hi to me or Jeff at the meeting. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you all yes, there. Come, walk up to me anytime. I'm sure Danny would be super busy. Walk up to me anytime and just introduce yourself and say, hey, I saw you on that podcast or that Zoom cast. There you go. <laughs> you guys, we're looking forward to seeing everyone in Philly next week. Have a great and safe travel to the meeting. And uh, thanks for tuning in with us. Yeah.